So at this time, we're going to have our three presenters um, come in and, and give their poems this morning. We decided that you should train up the child in the way they should go, as the scripture have said, and when they get older, they should not stray too far from it. So we're trying to raise them in the Lord. So at this time, we're going to ask Brother Mizell to come forward at this time and give his poem. Let us proceed by saying, praise the Lord. A strong man, he will not let anyone see the terrors he hold inside, yet he is not afraid to cry. He is strong for everyone else on the outside, always there for whoever is in need. He is a rock. He knows no greed, so sincere in all he does. Kindness is all his heart knows. He is a strong man, the strongest I ever known. Gentle is his eyes, his generosity flies, Soar, soars, soars beyond the skies. He is real and that is rare, positively one of a kind, a caring father, a respectful son, a loving lover, a strong man. Amen. Amen. A strong man. You can lead that right there, brother. All right, at this time, we're going to have Brother Jason come up. Let us receive him by saying, praise the Lord. If you think you're beaten, you are. If you think you dare not, you don't. If you think you win, but you can't, it's almost a kinch, you won't. If you think you'll lose, you're lost. But out in the world, you'll find success begins with a fellow's will. It's all in a state of mind. If you think you're outclassed, you are. You got to think high to rise. You got to be sure of yourself before you, before you can, you ever can, you can ever win the prize. Life's battles don't always go to the stronger or faster man, but sooner or later, the one who wins is the one who thinks he can. All right, right, Jason. Amen. You can. You can do it. Amen. amen, amen. At this time, our last presenter is going to be Brother Carlin. Let us say praise the Lord and put our hands together for him as he comes. Amen. amen. All right. When I was a boy, I acted as a boy. But when I became a man, I put away all the child things. I am a man. I am an Emmanuel Temple, apostolic Pentecostal man, which means I am a holy man. I am an honorable man. I am a giving man, I am a saved man, I am a wise man, I am a loving man, I am a God-fearing man, I am a caring man, I am a fasting man, I am a praying man, I am an understanding man, I am a forgiving man, I am a man of zest, gust, passion, taste, I am a man of royal blood, I am a man of praise and worship, I am a man that knows God, can do any and all things that we may ask or think. I'm a man that stands for nothing less than the truth. I'm a man of dignity. I'm a man, I'm not a man (laughs) that is lazy or slowful. I'm not a man that disobeys, disobeys and disrespects myself or others. I'm a man that keeps the commandments. This man resembles an Emmanuel Temple apostolic man. And this is the man that I'm striving to be. If I fall short, Lord, change me, mold me, and make me into the man that you want me to be true apostolic Pentecostal man. I just want to encourage the saints to pray for these young men as they grow in the church. And now they're not as safe as you. Uh, they're not as deep as you. And they haven't done all the things that you have experienced. But let's pray for them. Let's pray that God give them strength and insight and that they follow a pathway laid down by the Lord himself. So please join me in encouraging these young men in the church with a round of applause to say thank you for your service today. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. You may be seated, brothers. Amen. You may be seated today. We thank God for... And so today... Brothers and sisters, Emmanuel family, 
uh, it affords me a great pleasure to present to you uh, our honoree for the Lifetime Achievement Award here at the Emmanuel Temple Church in the person of the one and only Deacon Henry B. Matthews, Sr. Oh, come on, we can do a little bit better than that today. There we go. We are grateful today. He's a great man. He has been a leader for us for many, many years. And he has held, continues to hold the standard. And we wanted to take the brotherhood, what better day to give it to him than on the Brothers Day. Uh, Deacon Matthews is the epitome of what the brothers are all about. And so as the pastor of Emmanuel Temple Church, it affords me a great privilege to present to the deacon Henry B. Matthews, Sr., the Pastor's Aid Committee, and our church deeply values, appreciates, respects, and admires the amazing steadfastness of your lifetime support and the impact your contributions to the growth and development of our members, family, and community uh, for, of the Emmanuel Temple Church. We are Emmanuel, and God is with us. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, 2024, Lifetime Achievement Award recipient of the Emmanuel Temple Church, our brother, our friend, Deacon Henry B. Matthews, Sr. Let's give the Lord a hand praise for him. on the mercy yes, sir. because we always go right to the grace and I thank God for his mercy upon me. I thank God for the support I have gotten down through the years and those of you who always call you my flywheel and I always describe what the flywheel is for is to carry you in the dead moments when you lose your momentum, the flywheel will reserve your momentum. I love each of you, and I'm just outdone over my family being here and who have supported me, who have been a great flywheel in this time. I love the church. Emmanuel. I call it my church. <laughs> yes, yes, right. I know it belongs to God, but I share it with him. That's right. That's right. And I love him. I love pastor. I love the pastor's house. And I love each one of you. Thank God for you because so many times any one of you have put your arms around me and gave me support. I love the Lord. Amen. Deacon Henry Matthews, great man. This is just a small token that we have from the uh, Pastor Aid Society. We humbly and honorably would just like to give this to Deacon Henry as a token of our thanks. Praise the Lord, Deacon. Amen. God bless you, Deacon. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you, family, for joining us today. One more round, please, of applause for Deacon Henry Matthews. Amen. You may be seated.
just want to be right. I just want to be right. I just want to be right. I just want to be right. When you see me singing my song, I just want to be right. When you see me walking along, I just want to be right. Can you hear me say?
Well, I remember the day, remember the hour, fill my soul with the Holy Ghost power. I've been good, maybe you haven't heard. All you got to do is trust this holy word. I was sick, couldn't get well. Feel my body, I can't tell, I can't, I can't, oh yes, I can't depend on God, I can't depend on God, oh yes I can. I can depend on God. Oh, through the storm, through the rain, and through sickness, through the pain, I can, I can. Ooh, I remember the day. Remember it well. Snap my soul from the gates of hell. God been good, maybe you haven't heard. All you gotta do is trust this holy word. Through the storm, through the rain. Storm, through the rain. God is looking for me. God is looking for you. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that God was looking for somebody to worship him. Looking for somebody to lift him up. Is there anybody here know that if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Anybody know that when praises go up, Blessings come down. Anybody here know that when you let go and let God, something good is going to happen? Can a church say amen? amen. Hallelujah. If you would, please turn to somebody close to you, left or the right, and say, hey, are you a worshiper? If you're not, you got to move. Come on, somebody. We are serious about worship. Amen. Uh, some of y'all are laughing. Amen. Hallelujah. But we are serious about saying hallelujah. Serious about saying thank you, Jesus. Serious about saying glory. Hallelujah. Because God has been so good to us. The Bible says that he left his mighty throne in glory. Bring to us redemption story. I heard somebody else say he didn't have to do it, but he did. I'm going to start off, hallelujah, telling you the purpose of the incarnation. Amen. It was contrary to religiosity, and sometimes even Mary, uh, perhaps contrary to Pentecostalism. But the purpose of Jesus Christ coming God incarnated in, our, in the flesh, hallelujah, it was to redeem souls from a devil's hell. But it was even more than that. Amen. It was not just to, amen, hallelujah, pick us up and turn us around. And that's a good thing. I'm glad I've been picked up. I'm glad I've been turned around. I'm glad I'm Holy Ghost filled and fire baptized. Glad about it. But... Even more than that, one of the main purposes that gets overlooked, God incarnated himself in man and woman, hallelujah, through the Lord Jesus Christ, so he could turn we the rebels into worshipers. Can somebody say amen? amen. He transfixed us so we could worship him in spirit and in truth. Folks, they will look for many things. Search for gold, search for silver, 
pearls, lost civilizations. They keep trying to bring up the Titanic. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah, they'll look for a lost puppy. Some folks will even look for an escaped convict. Mm, I know about that. Misplaced items here and there. They search for health uh, cures, for sicknesses and what have you. It's happiness and success and security. How do they, they keep on searching until they try to find something? Doesn't it seem strange today that God himself will be on the prowl? Looking here and looking there. We sing that song, I looked all over. I, I couldn't find nobody. Search high and low. Still couldn't find nobody. But God who sits high and God that looks low is looking for you right now. Can the church say right now? Yeah. Hallelujah. The Bible says God seeketh such to worship him today. He puts himself into the role of a seeker, if you please, of a searcher. He is on a quest for the surrendered souls that are willing to worship him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Amen. You got to understand the greatness of God's quest today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We must understand the awesome place that worship has, hallelujah, in the economy of God. God wants to be worshiped. God wants to be praised. God deserves to be worshiped. God deserves to be praised. Oh, Y'all ain't saying nothing. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. hallelujah. The Bible says we must get a picture in our mind of how great God is. I heard somebody say years ago, no matter how high I get, I'll always be looking up to him. Oh, bless his name. Huh? The Bible says where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law is happy. Amen. Where there is no per uh, vision, the people perish. But where a praiser is, God is going to be happy about the praiser. Hallelujah. We praise him on the organ, and we praise him on the drums and the keyboard. Oh, God gets turned on when men begin to praise God. When you get that hallelujah in your heart, and the hallelujah in your heart comes to your mouth, and it goes to your hands. Huh? Don't mind me, I'm a praiser, hallelujah. Huh? And I'm going to praise God, uh, come hell or high water, because uh, I know where God has brought me from. Huh? Hallelujah. I'm like John in that old mule. Huh? If you don't want to praise him, uh, don't hinder me. Huh? In fact, you can hold my mule, because uh, I'm going to praise God. Huh? Can we take a praise break for a second? Huh? Can we lift up Jesus? Mm, glory. Huh? Hallelujah. Understand. Understand, if you please, uh, amen, this is a caution in nature, uh, hallelujah, uh, our vision uh, gives us victory, uh, but our lack of vi uh, vision, uh, amen, can impair our victory, uh, can somebody say, help me, Lord, uh, uh, when you don't have a vision uh, of how good God is, uh, if you don't get the vision about who woke you up this morning, uh, and who started you on your way, uh, that can negate your victory. Huh? Would the God, huh? folks would say hallelujah huh? when they get up in the morning. Huh? Hallelujah when you go out the door. Huh? Hallelujah. Huh? Amen. When things are going right huh? and things are going wrong, huh? God's looking for a hallelujah, huh? if you please. Huh? God's looking for a thank you, Jesus. Huh? God's saying, looking for a glory. Huh? Can the brother say glory? Huh? Can the sister say glory? Huh? Woo -hoo, huh? Can the church say glory? Huh? God's looking huh, for a glory. Huh? True worship, huh? it flows from a concept of God. Huh? Because worship involves the worthiness, huh? worship involves the worthiness huh? of the object. Huh? And I come to tell you, God is worthy to be praised. Huh? Uh, I like that song. Huh? It says, my hallelujah huh? belongs to you. Huh? My thank you, Jesus, huh? it belongs to you. Huh? My glory, 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 huh? hallelujah, huh? it belongs to you. Huh? 
all my praise, uh, all my hallelujahs, uh, all my thank you, Jesus. Uh, they belong to you. Uh, come on, get to your feet uh, and give somebody a God, a God, a hallelujah. Uh, I thank you, Jesus, uh, a glory, because uh, he's worthy. Uh, he's worthy. Uh, Bishop, he's worthy. Hallelujah. I, I tell our folks at home, I even tell the ministers, if you're going to sit up here, you've got to be a praiser. Come on, somebody. You're, you're looking at somebody who, in a backslidden condition, in summertime of 78, had two things happen to him. I was driving a truck, and I went over embankment. There's that embankment again. Didn't get hurt with my unsaved self. You're looking at a person who worked in a power plant. Amen. I was in a pit called a, uh, a, a sump pit under a clinker grinder. And we were changing a pump. The pump was about 20 foot long. And I was down the bottom. Amen. Getting a fly ash away from where we had the unbolt stuff. Amen. It was my turn in the pit. Hallelujah. They lowered down a bucket. And this bucket, a five-gallon bucket, I got ready to shovel again, reached back for the shovel, sawed off shovel, if you please. And I got a hold of a probe. The probe was not turned off. The probe had 480, church say 480. Come on, somebody. Watts of electricity. It beat me against those cement walls. And the only thing I could think about is, I'm unsaved. I'm unsaved. I, I, I'm unsaved. I heard the Sunday school teacher. I heard Elder Pitts. I heard Elder Agnew saying, don't let it be too late. Y'all remember them songs? Come on, somebody. Woo! Shout out about Holy A. Preaching the gospel going to soon be. I heard church in the pit. Amen. It beat me. It shook me. It slammed me. And finally it let me go. And I slid down and got ready to die. I looked up. I saw my supervisor looking down. He flew. I couldn't stand up. A man started to climb down to get me out. Amen. When I finally got up out of there, I couldn't, still couldn't stand up. And I said, Lord... I'm going to die. Hour later, my wits came back, my strength came back. I said, I'm going to sue somebody. Mm -hmm. I want money, lots and come on, somebody. And I heard the voice of God say, You fool. I delivered you. So a couple months later, I came back to the Lord, Sister Paulette. And I'm telling my testimony. I got shocked by 840 volts. Uh, uh, I mean, 480 volts. And after a while, the saints got tired of hearing my testimony. And I said, well, I ain't going to say that no more. Fast forward, eight years ago, uh, at a deliverance service, a young man got shocked by lightning at an apostolic Pentecostal church camp. His name is Zach Sandy. And he was dead for 39 minutes. This is documented. Hot dog, you can look it up on YouTube. He came before the church. He showed the clothes. They were melted, hard plastic. Showed his pants, showed his shoes. I'm like, hey man, hey man, hey man. Mm, glory. Had a great move of God that night. And when church was over, Bishop, he walked before me. Showed me his clothing. I said, what's this little dude doing? Why is he showing me his clothes again? Showed me his shirt, his pants, and his sneakers. I got the chills. I said, God, why, 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 why did he show me to me again? And God says, because you won't tell it. I'll talk about holy. You won't tell it. 
When the young man walked away, tears were coming out my eyes. I'm trying to, anybody else looking at me? I still got the chills. And God brought the power plant back to me. And you know what? I've been telling it ever since. God's looking for somebody that will get the big picture and give him the praise. Somebody uh, that don't mind uh, saying what God has done. Uh, somebody uh, that will make known uh, what God has done for him. Uh, somebody uh, that will say, if he did it for me, uh, he'll do it for you. Uh, is there anybody here uh, want to let God, people know uh, what God uh, has done for them? Uh, anybody uh, want to tell somebody uh, how God healed you, uh, how God set you free? Uh, is there anybody here? Uh, not ashamed uh, to say what God uh, has done in your life. Uh, come on, somebody. Uh, I could have been pushing up daisies, uh, dead in my grave, uh, lost forever. Uh, but God, uh, who is rich uh, in mercy, uh, wherewith he has saved me, uh, brought me out. Uh, I come to tell you, uh, when God came looking for me, uh, I'm going to say, Lord, uh, I'll praise you. Uh, I'll praise you. Uh, I'll praise you. Don't, don't, don't be a blind worshiper. Come on, somebody. You don't have to look around to see what God done done for you. Come on, somebody. Uh, 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 every time I look around, uh, he's doing something else. Uh, come on, somebody. Uh, don't be a blind worshiper. Uh, hey, glory. Uh, if the blind lead the blind, uh, they go into a ditch. Uh, but come on. Uh, when you stand up, and begin to praise God. Huh? It's contagious. Ah, huh? uh, yeah. Huh? I come to tell you, huh? my cup uh, is running over. Huh? And every time, every time, every time, huh? I think about Jesus. Huh? I feel good. Huh? I feel good. Huh? I feel good. God's looking for worshipers. God's looking for somebody that will tell it. God's looking for somebody who's not ashamed to say he brought me out. And when he brought me out, I was all right. He brought me out in the neck of time. Huh? Not on my time, huh? but on his time. Huh? I know what God huh, can do. Huh? Anybody know huh, what God can do? Huh? Anybody been there? Huh? Has God brought you out? Huh? Over huh? and over huh? and over huh? and over. Deacon, he's all right. Lady Sanders, he's all right. Emmanuel, God's all right. Let me tell you about her. He's all right. He's all right. Found me when I was lonely. Found me when I was blue. Found me. Nobody cared to help me. Ha. I didn't know what to do, huh? but I cried, huh? Lord, huh? if you save me, huh? I'll serve you. Huh? If you save me, huh? I'll walk for you. Huh? If you save me, huh? I'll praise you. Huh? Put some glad hands together huh? and give God glory. He's looking for praisers. You're looking at somebody. It's hard for me to sit still in church. Come on, somebody. And I have told folks on my pew, if you ain't going to praise him, go sit somewhere else. Because I mean to praise him. I'm for real. I'm for real about this praise. Because of God, I'm a cancer survivor. Hallelujah. November. November. Can I tell my holy name? 
of 2021, I found myself in Cleveland Clinic. I, I never thought I'd be there. I had a cousin that was a doctor there, and for years he kept saying, get screened, get screened. They ain't getting screened. They ain't put me in no hospital. Come on, somebody. Then I started having symptoms after symptom after symptom. We traveled one time and we got home and Lady Kim says, I'm getting you an appointment. I said, no, I don't need no appointment yet. Amen. And finally the symptoms got worse and she goes, you know what? You got an appointment Monday. I got mad. Uh, us guys don't like to go to the doctors. At least this one doesn't. But nonetheless, we went, had cancer. My father died of prostate cancer. They said prostate cancer. The big C, hallelujah. And they gave me a diagnosis and a prognosis. Mm, but God was working. But I saw my skin get, my face get real skinny. Amen. Four years ago, I was a much larger man. I got some of my weight back. But when I would look in the mirror, I was in denial because I saw a brown skeleton with flesh on it. Skin was drooping off of me. And I had a doctor that wasn't forthwith. You better pray about your doctor. Mm-hmm. Come on, somebody. Your doctor needs to be your friend. Your hairdresser needs to be your friend. Come on, some, your cook needs to be your friend. And so a friend told me he had gone through the situation. He said, you need to go to Cleveland Clinic to get a second opinion. Went to Cleveland. Mm -hmm. The young doctors came before me and said, we got to scratch everything they decide to do on your behalf. It won't fit your situation. Hot, yes, see there. So we came back home down 77, went to the Amish country, had lunch. Elder J, my wife. As soon as I got home, Cleveland Clinic said, Reverend, oh Reverend, you need to get to the ER stat. I've been going to the doctor for, I don't know how, for month after month after month, every week giving blood work. But thank God for the blood. I'll shake them a holy eight. I said, Lord, they, they didn't set up this surgery already. But the lady said, no, it's not about the surgery. It's about your diabetes. Didn't know I had diabetes. She said, it's 513. Please get to your local ER now. Went to the ER all night long. They fought to bring it down. They got it down to about 250 and they sent me home. And they said, and by the way, you're totally dehydrated. And I got a little angry. I said, how in the world did the willing people miss this? And then I just said, thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood. I tell my Holy, thank God for a praying wife. Thank God for a praying church. Mm -hmm. uh, hallelujah. Uh, and then a, a friend of mine passed away. They brought him back from Columbus. And I got weak. I was stuttering. Amen. Between uh, uh, phrases, I couldn't get my thoughts. So I stopped preaching. My son was preaching. The lady ministers were preaching. Amen. I was supporting them. Amen. And so that day, it was a Saturday. They said, we want you to preach Eddie's funeral. I said, you know it. You got it. So as I stepped through the pulpit, God anointed us to preach a powerful word. There was a man that used to sing for the apostolic clefts named Frank Ross. He had come in from Arizona to his cousin's funeral. He got in my face. He said, oh, pastor, oh, pastor, whatever you do, don't stop preaching. God's not done with you yet. Keep on preaching. Keep on preaching. 
keep on ministering. He said, oh, pastor, keep on singing. Keep on shouting. It went right to my spirit. Huh? What he was trying to tell me, God's looking for you because you've been hiding. God's looking for you because you ain't been doing what you're supposed to be doing. God's been looking for you because huh? he needs you huh? to give a word. Huh? Can the church say amen? Huh? I, I come to tell Emmanuel today, huh? and everybody that will hear me, huh? God is looking for you. Huh? Amen. Huh? If you're not saved, huh? he wants to save you. Huh? If you're saved, huh? he wants to use you huh? and make you mate huh? for the master's use. Huh? God wants you huh? to help somebody huh? as you walk huh? along this way. Huh? God wants you huh? to, hallelujah, to be in his stead huh? to help somebody huh? come out of darkness huh? into his marvelous light. Huh? God wants you uh, to stand up uh, and say, for God I'll live uh, and for God I'll die. Uh, God wants somebody, uh, amen, uh, to be a Holy Ghost role model. Uh, God's looking for you. Uh, put some glad hands together uh, and say, here I am. Uh, here I am. Uh, here I am. Hey, 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 Y'all save the Lord. You see Elder Neal? Y'all see Elder Neal? 98 years young. Still standing up. Still giving God the glory. Still praising, huh? God came looking for him a long time ago, huh? And he's not tired, huh? He's not tired, huh? He's not tired yet. Not tired. I'm almost done. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I, I, I said that I'm one of nine. I'm the second oldest. I'm so glad that God came looking for my daddy. He was in Ohio. He came looking for my mama. She was in Texas. We call her the Yellow Rose. Amen. And all of Lois Agnew's children, all nine are saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, born of the water in Jesus' name, born of the Spirit, full of the Holy Ghost. God's still using my mother. She sits in her chair about five hours of the day. Then she gets back in her bed. Hallelujah. We have to lift her back into her bed. And, and she has caregivers come in and out. And when she first got sick, there were some in the family. Somebody say some in the family. They told us old dogs that we were delusional. They told us we didn't want to face reality. Mama's 89. Daddy died at 79. And maybe this is the end. I would stood them to the face. My oldest sister, Wanda, would stood them to their face. And I said, you know what? Mama had faith for all of us. Mama changed our diapers. She fed our mouths. She put clothes on her back, spanked us when we needed spanked. We were serious, it was a whipping. Come on, somebody. Holiday was for real, for real about it. I remember one time, 
I was playing ball in the street about 15 years old. And I knew I was too close to the house to actually cuss. So I was fussing real close to cussing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I heard Mother Lois say, hey, Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy. She didn't act mad. She didn't act bad. And I said I was going to come home and do a chore. When I got in the door, she pulled me the rest of the way in the door, slammed me against the wall, and started hitting me, saying, who taught you to talk like that? I slid down to the floor and covered up. She kicked me back to my feet. What I didn't understand, I didn't believe my mother was that strong. I didn't even think about hitting her back. But I began to think about those times she taught was teaching me to be a man. Daddy taught me to be a man. But now that she's sick, we're not putting her in a rest home. If, we, if, if all possible, we're not putting her there. And every day she wakes up, she goes, am I in my house? We say, yes, mama, you're in your house. But my day is Wednesday. And every Wednesday she gets on a prayer band call. Every Wednesday she begins to praise God. All oh, bless his name. And even when she sleeps, she'll wake up. If you lay hands on her, she'll go to praising God. Huh? Come on, somebody. Huh? I, 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 and I just marvel that you're still a praise, uh, Elder. Huh? Deep down in her soul. Huh? But one day, huh? hey, man, she says, reach in my pocket. Huh? She was laying on her bed. Huh? I said, Mama, you don't got no pockets in your nightgown. Huh? She said, reach in my pocket. I reached to her side. She took her hand. She held my hand. She goes, feel that piece of paper huh, down in my pocket. I'm thinking, Mama, there ain't no paper and there ain't no pocket. Huh? She wouldn't let go of my hand, my sister. Huh? And I said, Mama, huh, what's going on? Huh? She goes, you know what? Huh? I write your name down on this piece of paper. Huh? I write Wanda's name down. All nine of you on a piece of paper. Huh? I put the grandchildren huh, on a piece of paper. Huh? I, I, I even put the great grands huh, on a piece of paper. Huh? All the pastors in the valley, huh, I put it on a piece of paper. Huh? I'm still looking for the piece of paper. A huh? little slow. Huh? Come on, somebody. Huh? Amen. She, I put everybody, all the saints. Huh? Your church, uh, my church, uh, I put it on a piece of paper. Uh, and then as I go about my day, uh, I stick my pocket uh, in the piece of paper. Uh, and I begin to pray for the saints, uh, pray for my children, uh, the grandchildren. Uh, somebody ought to say something up in here. Uh, God's calling us. Uh, he's looking for warriors uh, who will pray. Uh, looking for warriors uh, who will give him glory. Uh, looking for warriors uh, that will turn their plate down. Uh, looking for people uh, that will come out to prayer meeting. Uh, looking for folks uh, that will come out to Bible study. Uh, looking for folks uh, who will work in the kitchen. Uh, looking for somebody uh, that go on the streets uh, and say, God uh, loves you. Uh, can the church say amen? And when this preacher finally understood what mama was saying to me, hey amen, I got my own piece of paper now. Come on, somebody. A kid in my heart. God's looking for you to be committed to him. It's a And what mama was really, really saying, come on in the room. Come on in the room. Come on in the prayer room. Jesus is my doctor. Writes out all my scription and he gives me all my medicine in the room. Even on her bed of affliction, she's in the room. She's praising God. Every so often, she'll tell me to look up a song I don't know because it came from Texas back in the 40s and the 50s. But I'll get on YouTube and me and her will have church. At 91 years old, she's understanding that God's still looking for a praiser. It don't matter how old you are. It don't matter how old you ain't. God's looking for you to serve him in the beauty of holiness. I come to tell you that this is the best life. And God's looking for you 
to be a part of the best life, huh? Can a church say amen, huh? I understand. I may not be the best of anything, huh? Or have the best of anything, huh? But I know someone, huh, who has everything, huh? And to me, huh, he's my everything, huh? And I'm gonna praise him, huh? I know, huh, he's looking for my thank yous, huh? I know, huh, he's looking for my praise, huh? I realize, huh, that God, huh, wants to hear from us, huh? And I come to tell you, huh, when you praise, huh, when you worship, huh, God peels the veil, huh, back from heaven, huh, and God, huh, he sends healing down, huh, salvation down, huh, come on, some breakthrough, huh, freedom, huh, God's got everything you need, huh, if you need it, huh, God's got it, huh, but you gotta be a worshiper, huh, in spirit, huh, and in truth, huh, it's time to praise him, huh, like you lost your mind, huh, Get outside your mind, huh? And give God the praise. Make it your shot up. God looking for every man. Every woman, every boy and girl, grandma, great grandma, grandpa, great grandpa, come on, uncle, auntie, come on, huh? Junior, Pookie, and Ray Ray, huh? God's looking for everybody, huh? To give him the glory, huh? To lift him up, huh? Oh, come on, somebody, huh? It's time to take the roof off of this place, huh? And give God glory. I don't know about you, but God saved me. I don't want to be bound. I don't know about you, but God healed my body. I don't want to be bound. I don't know about you, but God brought me out. Come on, and I refuse to be bound. I'm going to holler. I'm going to shout, huh? I'm going to jump, huh? I'm going to dance, huh? Because God! My time of holy end. Yeah, Lord. My time give you a shout to my heart. That's right, son, praise him. Somebody praise him. Everybody praise him. Everybody lift him up. We call you a shot of Baha. We got people from Detroit and they know how to praise God. We got people from Martin's Ferry and we know how to praise God. And we got all Sandusky and we're going to worship him. God's looking for your praise. Mm hmm. Come on, somebody. You know, my grandchildren, they don't ask for quarters. They don't ask for dollar bills. Anybody feel me? Pappy, we're going to B-dubs. Pappy, get a $5 bill out. And I got one named Olivia. She's so sweet and pretty. She just says, Pappy, I need two of those. And Olivia is good, she will say thank you in a minute. But I got some other ones. You hand them a 10 spot or a 20 spot, I grab a hold of them. I go, you forget something? Oh, thank you, Pappy. God says, don't forget to praise me. Don't forget who brought you to the dance. Don't forget to give him glory. God's looking for such to worship him in spirit and in truth. Our oldest grandson is very blessed. Amen. He's been playing the drums since he came out the womb. Amen. He's six foot six, all state in football, all state in basketball as a junior. 
and he'll probably gonna repeat that this uh, year for basketball. Amen. As a sophomore, he was all state in basketball. And a month after I had my surgery, Christmas program, Alex is not there. Alex is in the hospital. Appendix has ruptured. My tabo holy. And I said, oh Lord, what's happening? We get to the hospital. He's in pain. We thought he had the flu. We thought he had COVID, but it was a ruptured appendix. Amen. And anyhow, we saw him life flighted to Columbus, National, Nationals Children's. And, and anyhow, we're praying. But what I noticed was the faith he had in the local hospital. He was saying, thank you, Jesus. I got in the uh, children's the next day, about 6 o'clock after the surgery. Only four people, four people were allowed in. And I was with him for a half an hour. I sung hymns to him. And I looked up. He was laying on his back, but his hands were up as high as he could get them, saying, thank you, Jesus. Laid hands on him. He began to speak in tongues. Come on, somebody. God is always looking for praise from anybody. And God brought him out. He was home for Christmas. Amen. We got depressed in the middle of the week. I kept saying, God's got you. God's got you. My mother, amen, when I was getting ready to go to the hospital, she's quoted Ezekiel 16.6. When I saw you polluted in your own blood, uh, while you was in your own blood, I said, live. Yea, I said, live. Saints, no matter what it is, get your eyes off the problems, get your eyes on God, and give him the praise. Yeah. Just had a round with the insurance company. Oh, I was hot. They maxed, they killed my car, my baby, and then they acted like they weren't going to pay it. I got heated. Then I said, Lord, forgive me for getting heated. God said, get your eyes off of them and get your eyes on me. How do Friday I got my check, y'all? Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. You're talking about $7,000? Come on, somebody. God will do it. But you got to be a worshiper. They that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. Put your hands together for Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so good. We all rise to our feet today. Hallelujah. I believe God has touched somebody this day. Hallelujah. We don't know what your need is, but God knows. Hallelujah. As the ministers are coming, if you need to know Jesus, you can meet him today. You could even get saved as I was preaching or as they were singing. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. I've seen it done. Hallelujah. If you need healing in your body, healing is here. Hallelujah. We had a service Sunday night. There were 42 healings. Hallelujah. One person was filled with the Holy Ghost. A young man that had hit rock bottom. Amen. We baptized him last summer. And he was seeking God.